Well, the sun is finally out, the roads are finally dry, and uh, the motor Guzzi is finally gone. No, not that one. Uh, the V85 TT that I've had for just over three years. Uh, I've decided to trade that in and uh, buy a new bike. So in this video, I shall reveal my new Velocipede. And it is the BMW R1250RT. Uh, this is a 2020 model that I've bought. It had uh, just under 7,000 miles on it. And uh, I've actually already put another 500 on it. I bought it in December and I actually bought it blind, which is uh, of course a silly thing to do. Uh, but I particularly wanted a red one and I particularly wanted a red one with a red top box and uh, a fruity pipe on it and various other sort of specs. I wanted the LE model, I wanted the toys on it. And uh, the only one I could find was in Glasgow. So uh, I bought it sight unseen, had it shipped down, and uh, they took away my V85 TT as a trade-in. So that's why you find me today, uh, enjoying the roads heading towards Exmoor on this uh, R1250 RT. And in this video, I just want to give you my very initial impressions. Uh, I'll do a, a separate review video and uh, I'll just give you an idea of, of what it's like to ride because it is quite a big bike and um, also talk about why I chose this particular bike uh, over the other contenders. And of course, as per usual in the UK, there's a van in front of me to spoil the scenery. I'm not going to rush to get past him though, let's, uh, let's take it easy. Uh, this is a bike that you can uh, really relax on because it is so comfortable. Now let me just uh, go back to the V85 TT and explain why I'm selling that. Because actually for me, having a bike for just over three years, that is a new record, I think. That's the longest I've had a bike for. I really like that bike. Uh, now part of the reason I had it for such a long time is probably the pandemic. I didn't get to ride it as much as I would have liked. But I was intending to keep it. I'd paid it off, paid off the finance, and uh, it was going to be my bike. I bought this uh, stupidly expensive adventure helmet to go with it, which now looks ridiculous with the uh, R1250, but I'm not going out to buy another helmet. So uh, I'll just have to look like a bit of a plank. The V85 is a, a just a fantastic bike. I really love the engine. It was comfortable to ride. It handled brilliantly. And I had some really enjoyable rides on that. But there were a couple of things that I felt I would like to, to do differently if I was buying a, a new bike. And I, I did a tour in Cornwall a couple of years back and it was absolutely freezing cold. And I would get up in the morning and the seat was frozen. I had to defrost the seat. And riding in that kind of weather isn't very pleasant. So I thought to myself, well, next bike I get, I am gonna try and look for a touring bike with a heated seat so that uh, I don't have to put up with that. Obviously that's not enough to go out and buy a bike on its own. Um, but also my wife uh, expressed an interest in doing some trips with me, but she does struggle a bit with her back. And I'm looking at the V85 and the top box and the height of it. And I think it would be hard for her to, to ride on that bike. I don't think it would be comfortable. There's no point in doing it. If you're not comfortable, it's uh, just a disaster and it will have a miserable time. So I wanted to get a touring bike. Now I've always had a fascination for Honda Goldwings and last year I spotted that the uh, Missenden Flyer, if you watch any of his videos, he had uh, traded in his Goldwing and I was looking at that exact Goldwing that he traded in without realising it was his. And I, I did think the number plate looked familiar because uh, I've been watching his videos on the Goldwing. As it turns out it was his and then, then a video came out explaining that he'd bought a new bike and uh, hence why he'd uh, got rid of the other one. I just I decided against it at the time. Uh, I wasn't quite ready to to make the move and I, I decided ultimately I would stick with the V85. That was my, my decision. When it finally came to the point where we decided we were going to sell the V85 and get a, a new bike for two up touring, I did consider the Goldwing again, uh, but I, I didn't consider it for very long. I would love to have one and it's still on my, my kind of wish list as something I'd like to have, but I thought it's a big step to go up to that size of touring bike. And whilst I'm confident I could handle it, I've had a lot of different bikes. So I don't think that's the issue. It's, it's more about living with it. Would I do any short journeys on it? Or would I just spend my time thinking, I've got this amazing touring bike in the garage that I'm not using and I'm, I'm not going on tours and it would hang over me like a, like a weight. So uh, 
I thought, no, I'm not going to do that. And that got me starting to look at the K1600 that BMW offer. And I almost bought one of those, but uh, I decided in the end, again, for the same reason, it is a big bike. Uh, it's quite difficult to maneuver around. I know it's got the reverse gear and everything to help you, but I just thought it's probably not the right choice at this point in time because I'm not sure how appropriate it would be for those smaller trips. Is it gonna be a good everyday bike? Or again, will I just be thinking, I need to be away and doing tours on this thing? And then I went to the NEC for the bike show with some friends, and that's always a dangerous thing to do because last time I went to the bike show at the NEC, that's when I saw the V85 TT and I ended up buying one of those. And as a result of that, I then bought the V7 850, which gave me a bit of grief last year. This time I went and sat on the BMWs and I, before I had the V85 TT, I had an R1200 RS. And I have to say, of all the bikes I've owned, by quite a distance actually, that, that was the best bike. And that's what I would have liked to have had again, the, the new version, the R1250 RS. But again, I'm sort of thinking about the, the comfort factor and having had one of those bikes, I know it doesn't have uh, the, the top level touring comfort because it is a sports tourer. And that's very appealing, of course. Uh, it's nice to have a bike that can do a bit of both. And I, I did some very long trips on that, um, but I never did a long trip with my wife on, on the back of it. And by the time you've priced up all of the different options and everything else, it, it does get quite expensive. And that kind of then made me think, well, I should be looking at the proper touring version of the bike, the, the RT. And that's how we get to the point where I'm now sat riding an RT. Uh, but I didn't choose a new bike, I went for a used bike, and I just want to explain that as well. Because uh, I think it's it's very tempting to go for the new bike, and I've had a lot of new bikes, and I've had some used bikes. I've had a lot of bikes over the last, uh, I don't know how long I've been riding, 15 years or something. Uh, I think it averages more than one a year, which is uh, disgraceful really, but there we go. Just coming through the little town of Witherliscum, and the scenery gets uh, very nice after this. Lovely riding road this. Uh, this is the the road from Taunton to Bampton and it, it is a fantastic riding road if you ever down in this part of the world Southwest UK Somerset and uh, you, you too could enjoy this lovely road now let me get back to what I was saying uh, I chose to go for a used version of this bike rather than the new one and there, there are kind of three main differences that I spotted between the the new one and the used one uh, and the first thing is that uh, the new one is definitely a better looking machine from the front. BMW really tidied up the front end. I think this one is a bit ugly. Um, it's, this is not a bike that appeals to my heart. It's not something I look at and think, oh, that's a beautiful machine. Uh, this is a little bit more functional for me. Uh, I don't think it's, it's a terrible looking bike, but uh, certainly the acres of black plastic and uh, the front end does look a little bit challenged, uh, in my personal opinion. So I think the latest model is the 2022. Uh, a nice tight corner to deal with here. Let me just take care of this second gear. Lovely. So yeah, it's the 2022 model, I think, that has the, the sharper front end. Uh, the other thing that they've changed on it, which I don't like, so I love the front end, but I don't like the dash, which is now just an LCD unit. So on this bike, we've got a proper speedometer, a proper taco. Um, we've got a digital display in the middle, space for the sat nav. Uh, it looks great. I much prefer having those physical dials over a TFT. Now that is just a personal preference thing. I know a lot of people would prefer the TFT. The other thing that I've noticed is different between the, the newer model and this current model is if you can see down here on the side of the bike, I don't know how well this is gonna come out on camera, but we've got these four uh, circular black space fillers. Now if you go for the model with the radio on, uh, which this one doesn't have a radio, then those buttons uh, are radio presets on this particular model here. On the newer model I believe they're function buttons that you can uh, preset to whatever you like. So you can, for instance, have them controlling the heated grips or the seat or something like that. I think that would be really useful and I really hate the whole space filler plastic. You know, it's that 
it's always that look what you could have won feeling when you look at it because you haven't got whatever that button should be uh, so that's definitely better on the new bike as well not too keen on this but otherwise I think they are fairly similar so overall I would have probably preferred to have the newer bike but once you spec it up with all the luggage and the, and the options that I would want to have it gets really expensive you know, we're at well over 20 grand and uh, at that point it's quite a big decision and when I was shopping around I realized that uh, you could get a used BMW with BMW's approved used warranty so they'll still give you if you buy from a main dealer and you buy an approved used bike they'll still give you two years warranty two years breakdown cover and it's supposed to meet all of their standards so you sort of think well I'm buying with reasonable confidence and uh, I'm not going to say what the price was uh, mainly because I can't actually remember the exact figure but it's around about uh, 50 to 60 percent of the price of a new one probably closer to 60 percent that's a lot of saving for uh, this used bike now when you buy a new bike one of the things I found with it is that it, it only goes one way it, you see it deteriorate in front of your eyes because that's going to happen you know it doesn't stay shiny and new for very long with a used bike it is possible to improve it and I quite like that you don't have to faff about with running the engine in you don't have to go for the first service the bike's going to come to you uh, with an MOT certificate if appropriate or whatever the inspection is in in your country and a year service but basically you're not going to have to do anything on it for a whole year and that's uh, pretty appealing so that's the decision I made and that's why I've got this bike now let's just talk about the the impressions of the bike because it does look like a really big heavy bike and uh, honestly it's not that bad at all um, I haven't had any issues at all moving it around I mean sure it's heavy but I can get it up on the center stand I can maneuver it around without any issues and it's lovely to ride it's actually really quite agile uh, got it set in the road mode at the moment let me just change that to dynamic for the suspension I'll talk about that in a moment and I just stiffens it up a bit and you can see you know it's it's not a sports bike obviously but uh, out here on these uh, roads riding along at 60 miles an hour as we are it's absolutely perfect you can maneuver it around uh, I just stopped for lunch at a, at a little shop and maneuvered it around the car park no problems at all so I guess I'm six foot one I'm what about 80 kilos something like that um, so I'm not a, a tiny guy but I'm, I'm not the biggest guy either I'm not super muscly or anything uh, and I was, I'm able to hustle it around no problems so my wife has already been on the back a couple of times we've had a couple of sort of trial ride outs and you, you don't even notice <laughs> you barely notice that somebody's there on the back it's absolutely incredible and part of the reason for that is the suspension on this bike which is I think they call it a telelever please correct me if I'm wrong on that uh, so it does have forks but uh, and they are telescopic forks but it, it has a, a spring and a shock uh, I can't explain it I'll try and get some footage of that to overlay at this point so you can see what I'm talking about uh, and what that means is when you hit the brakes so I've got it's nice and clear behind us let me just hit the brakes now and well first of all it stops up really well um, and secondly it doesn't dive <laughs> it's quite a bizarre sensation because of course the BMW I had before had um, upside down conventional telescopic forks so you know obviously it did did dive when you, you hit the brakes hard uh, but also this has link brakes much like the Honda or at least I believe it does again correct me if I'm wrong there in in the comments uh, so if you apply the back brake you get a bit of front brake as well and likewise I think if you apply the front brake you get a bit of back brake maybe I'm wrong about that but it certainly feels like that's what it's doing I'm finding that I don't use the back brake quite as much on this bike I'm quite a, a heavy back brake user I like to just trail it gently through tighter corners um, and I use it when I'm maneuvering at low speed I haven't found it quite as necessary to do it with this bike uh, obviously we got uh, this amazing BMW engine uh, which is you know it's the stuff of legends it's a fantastic engine there's so much grunt in it so much torque I mean, compared to something like the V85 
uh, well, there is no comparison. This is just on a completely different level. Uh, in the real world, these BMW engines are just absolutely fantastic. The other things that I've got on this bike, I've got the, the quick shifter. And again, I'll talk about that when I do my review video. Uh, it's a nice thing to have. I'd be happy without it, but uh, you know, we've got it. It's not something I particularly was desperate for, but it's on the on the bike. I've got the additional spotlights on the front. That is something that I wanted, uh, particularly for nighttime riding. Just gives you that extra bit of confidence, especially when you're on unfamiliar roads, as you often will be if you're uh, touring your motorcycle. And of course, we do have the comfort options as well. We've got heated grips, which are just nuclear power. Uh, I've got them on two out of five at the moment, and my hands are quite warm actually I'll be turning that down in a moment. Uh, the heated seat as well uh, not quite as nuclear but uh, certainly gets the job done and that is a very nice thing to have. Uh, warm in your backside whilst you ride. My wife says that the passenger seat which has its own separate heating controls is uh, really nice. She says it's really comfortable on the back. Uh, it's got the pad on the top box so nice comfortable bike for two up touring. Love this room. <laughs> just won't come out on the camera but uh, you can get some nice lean angle around here. This is the road just as we're getting into Bampton. first picked up this bike I did decide to take it out for a long ride and uh, it was a filthy day it was wet raining loads of muck on the road I still haven't managed to clean it all off the bike it's that bad um, but I rode it all the way down to Cornwall and quite a long way into Cornwall actually from uh, where we live in Devon and I, all the way back I, I didn't stop for what three and a bit hours and I only stopped because I needed to get some fuel I got straight back on the bike and rode it all the way home. Uh, it's so comfortable, you can just do these really long rides without any problem at all. Now one of the things that it does have is this huge windscreen in front of you and it is uh, controlled by this button here on the left bar so we can uh, put it down, put it up, have it wherever you want. Uh, the bike remembers where you've had it when you switch the bike off it uh, brings the screen down and then when you switch the bike on it will raise up once you start moving quite a nice little feature now some people have said that they find that when they have the screen all the way up on a motorway they, they get this weird kind of suction effect where they get sucked in I don't notice that personally I've not had any issue with that I just think it's something that really adds to the comfort you're not getting buffeted around by the wind at all which means you can sit for for some time on the bike, like I say, with, without any issues. So that's a big plus point for me. Uh, with all of this uh, extra, I don't know what you call it, plastic and fairing and bits and pieces, you, your hands are fairly well protected from the wind as well. I've got these uh, deflectors here, which are kind of deflecting the wind off. I can feel it if I put my hand up here, but down here on the bars, no wind resistance at all. So BMW have really thought about this, thought about the comfort, seating position the seat has a couple of levels to it the standard i believe i haven't messed with it i find that it's a a fine height for me again i'm about six foot one and i'm what's that 185 centimeters uh, i'm not having any problems at all flat foot in this uh, if anything actually i would say my knees are probably a little bit more bent than i would like i would like the pegs slightly lower or the seat slightly higher for me that said Again, I'll refer back to, to the long ride I did. I was completely comfortable. I didn't get uh, aching knees or anything like that. So it might seem a bit odd, but it, it works. It works for me anyway. The other toy that we got with this is the electronic suspension. And this has moved on a little bit as well since I had my RS. So first of all, the preload is now automatic. A preload adjustment, in case you're not familiar with it, is basically setting up the spring so that the bike will be level uh, no matter how much weight you've got on the back. You know, so you don't end up with uh, the bike kind of leaning up at the front. 
so what you do if you know you're taking a pillion on a traditional bike you, you get your spanner out and you, you add some preload onto the suspension and that just levels the bike up but what the BMW here is doing is automatically adjusting it based on the weight so if you're carrying a bunch of luggage it'll adjust for you if you're carrying a pillion it's going to adjust for you so that it always feels right uh, that of course makes a huge difference not happy to faff around with that uh, on the old BMW system you used to have to uh, uh, it was still electronically adjusted but you have to choose whether you're carrying a pillion or luggage or pillion and luggage that kind of thing the other thing you could change on it is the dynamic ESA. So you could choose uh, either road or dynamic mode. So you can see I've got it in dynamic at the moment. So that's a, a nice sort of sporty response. If you change it into road mode, it definitely becomes a bit softer. And if you're on a twisty road like this, you will find it, the bike seems to wallow a bit. You know, you're more aware of the weight, I would say, when it's in road mode. Uh, but also, if you're on the highway and you're, you know, you're cruising along a 60 70 miles an hour then that's the mode you're going to want it in uh, for roads like this afternoon we definitely want to have dynamic and, uh, i'm trying to be careful here because of the under the trees the road is all wet and I, I just spent ages cleaning my bike yesterday and of course there's loads of filth on the road as well so you ride through these wet bits and the bike's going to be filthy again what else can I tell you about it? The mirrors. Mirrors are fantastic. Uh, I really like the position of them. They're very easy to adjust. You just uh, push on the mirror to get it to where you want and then it stays there. There's no danger of someone nudging your bike, you know, as they walk past it or as you kind of work your way around it in the garage, you don't hit the mirrors by accident, that kind of thing. Uh, they're nice and stable, they give you a fairly good view of the road behind without too many vibrations. Pretty good. And finally, the other thing that uh, really drew me to this bike, I said I wanted a fruity pipe. These engines sound fantastic and they kind of pop and burble on the overrun, even with the stock pipe. Um, but I wanted to, to have the sports pipe and this one has the Akrapovic system already installed so there's another expensive option that uh, I didn't have to pay full price for because I bought used. So I've really got everything I wanted and nothing that I didn't want. I, I really didn't want the radio. I don't personally get that. That's, uh, that's not for me. Uh, it's a bit of a shame I guess that it looks like it's got a radio but i don't know what they would do with those big spaces otherwise um, i was worried that uh, stuff would get caught in those uh, grills and make them difficult to clean but it, it hasn't been the case so far and generally cleaning the bike i have to say this is not an easy bike to clean but then neither was the v85 tt that it replaced it, it's a big bike there's uh, lots of areas to get into and uh, if you do make the mistake of taking it out when it's completely filthy on the road it's going to take a long time to get all of that uh, dirt off the bike and uh, something else to bear in mind as well is this acres of black plastic you've got it here all around the dash there's uh, stuff on the sides on the front fender on the the rear on the cases and the top box and it fades quite quickly that's that's what i find with this kind of black plastic trim same on cars it, i don't understand why why they use it um, it's cheaper i suppose and maybe cheaper if you end up dropping the bike but um, i've had to go over it with some uh, blackening stuff uh, i use something called Maguire's. perhaps i'll feature that in another video at some point it doesn't last forever but it certainly makes it look nicer for for a couple of months uh, when it does come to drop in the bike uh, obviously you are not going to want to drop this bike because uh, it's going to be a really expensive fix there's all this plastic and uh, the cylinder heads i did actually drop my uh, rs once uh, fortunately uh, only most of my friends were there to see me do it but uh, there we go and that was an expensive drop as well because it kind of pivoted on the cylinder head and the back wheel and uh, so i had to get a new um, cylinder head cover which was quite expensive for what it was so it was a few hundred quid anyway that uh, dropping it but this one would be worse 
because I'm fairly convinced that the plastic would, would hit the deck and you're going to be faced with a big bill. So either get some engine bars on it if you're concerned about it or um, just don't drop it. <laughs> I'm just going to risk it and we'll see how we go. So anyway, if you're in the market for a touring bike and like me, you've looked at the Goldwing and thought that's just a bit too big or the K1600, just a bit too big. I think this is well worth a look. You get most of the comfort, I would say, of a bike uh, like the K1600 and the, the Goldwing. There's loads of power on offer from this uh, twin cylinder engine. It's uh, pretty smooth, it sounds good, it's fun to ride. Uh, the bike handles really well, it's great to up, it's got all of the toys that you want. Uh, I'd say it's well worth a look. These bikes have been around for a while now, the, the RT goes back a little way, uh, so you've got the R1200 version of it as well. So on the used market there's plenty of options around for lots of different price brackets. Obviously not all of them will have all of the toys on, uh, but you can shop around. Uh, find yourself a good deal and if like me you go for something a little bit newer a couple of years old something like that then you can get that bmw uh, approved used with the uh, two-year warranty and two years breakdown cover and i think that's you know pretty good for buying a used machine you, you get that dealer experience uh, which some people like and some people are not fussed about at all so with the weather turning nice, I'm planning to get out a bit more on this bike and I've got a trip booked. So in a few weeks time, I'm heading over to France with my dad. Uh, we're going to ride all the way down across the Milau Viaduct and uh, into Spain, across the, uh, the bottom of the Pyrenees there and over towards the Picos in the north of Spain. And then we'll uh, get the boat back from Spain. It's about 11 days, I think, trip. So I'm planning to film every day and uh, hopefully bring some content from that trip. So if you like that kind of thing, stay tuned. I'll obviously comment on the R1250 as we're riding around, uh, things that I find are good and things that are not so good. So uh, hopefully that's helpful to anybody who's considering buying one because you get a proper uh, experience from an actual long mileage tour. And that's it for this video, I think. Uh, thanks uh, for joining me today for this little ride. Look at this beautiful scenery. Sun's out, I'm gonna enjoy it and uh, I'll catch you next time, CG Rides.